So here's my wide back all ironed out and ready to go. I'm gonna go grab the pins and get going, get it all pinned in. I've got my quilt on the machine. I've got my pattern all selected. So now I'm gonna get it all set up and good to go. And then we're gonna quilting. It feels like it's been forever since I've used the long arm. So I'm excited to get it going at it again. So I started right around five and now it's just after 6.20 and I'm in my last zone. So it was nice that this is just taking me just over an hour to do, especially since I was so delayed on getting this project started that I might even debate sewing on my binding tonight. We'll see how energetic I am after this last zone and then go and get dinner. So now I'm home, trimmed up my quilt, and while Trixie was busy doing stuff like this, I made my binding. I am determined to finish this quilt tonight since everything started off so behind, which means it's Wednesday, and I'm finishing ahead of schedule. It's actually right on schedule. I wouldn't say ahead at this point. So I realized also this week that this is quilt number 23. So I am three quilts away from finishing this 26 and 21 adventure, which seems so crazy to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the binding on this quilt and call it done.
still Wednesday and it's done. So that crunch time at the beginning, boy, was it stressful, but we're done. Binding is on. Everything is good to go. And I've got a day to spare to figure out what's going to happen next week. So the twister tool was great. Like nothing. I had no issues with it. I have heard that using a smaller rotary cutter makes it less likely that you're going to cut into the next piece. I didn't have that issue at all because I was aware of how far past my template I was cutting, but it was kind of a bummer. The amount of waste that came from the squares, like it did. Sure. You got a good size, little square in the middle, but if you don't have a project set up for that specific size of square, I guess you just stick them aside and I'll like the weird chunks on the side border. Those, I don't know what I'm going to do with those yet. If they're even useful, they're kind of these weird black Kona triangle shapes right now. So that's what I have to say about that. I would totally do a twister quilt again. Like I mentioned before, a super cute Dr. Seuss one I have in mind with not a single person having a baby that I would give it to. And so this tool is going to get passed back to my mom because it's actually hers. She made the first one and she already has plans for her second or third one. So I think this twister tool is going to get passed back and forth. And if I do some project like this next year, I have a feeling a twister quilt will make its reappearance. So I highly recommend it if you're looking for a quick project that turns out super fun, super easy and looks way trickier than it really is. The twister tools where it at the 10, this is the one for the 10 inch squares. And it goes all the way down to these little itty bitty ones for like two inch squares. So if you're up for a crazy challenge, you can get a smaller one. I know a place that has them. And if you're up for a normal challenge, the 10 inch one is perfect. So without further ado, let's look at some pictures of this finished quilt.